I was debating how raunchy to go with my grandma's story. Oh, go I'm hard. Go raunchy. Go, no, go raunchy. hard. Good. Anyway, welcome to a welcome. new episode of Two Nosy Meerkats. Woo! My name is Lucas Arnold. My name is Gabby Jordan Brown. And today we have a lovely, lovely, lovely guest for you guys. A uh, comedian, actor, and writer who I have met and found on TikTok and who just blew me away with a bunch of sketches and shit that she did. She absolutely astounds me. She's so funny. Please give a huge round of applause for Molly Clark. Woo! Hello, and guys. Thank Molly you so much was for having me. about to tell us a story about her slutty grandmother. Yes, yeah. we were talking about grandmas in our um, pre pre call. So I'll just dive right into it. Um, my family is very complicated and very secretive and there's a lot of dynamics. However, one dynamic that could not go under the rug was that the year that I started college, 2015, my grandpa died that summer. And my grandma is this very like matriarchal figure and woman. And she, about three months later, I just keep thinking about her listening to this, but that's totally fine. Her three months later <laughs> oh. was in a full-blown relationship with his best friend and lifelong business partner whoa yes okay can and we just uh, forgive me for pausing no. strong start molly strong this is start. a strong start and they are still together so that was in 2015 wow. and oh, if they're still together how slutty is that really yeah. well it begs everyone kind of begs the question when did this really start and recently, uh, my uh, next door neighbor, who I told the story to, said, "Well, how did your grandpa die? Did he just like collapse over at the breakfast table?" She of said, "Of a broken a joke. heart." And I said, "Actually, that is how he died. He died at the breakfast table." And so now people are getting into my head that like my grandma like killed my grandpa for this other guy, which is not what happened, Grandma. If you're listening, like fully, I, I get it. You were in love with a lot of things, but. Your grandmother's one of our longtime listeners. Yeah, I know. I'm like, know. she's one of the 100. Yeah. Um, she, but anyway, so he died. She starts dating his best friend, longtime business partner, who like my mom like called like uncle and like vibes like that. And wow. yeah, they've been together ever since. Wait, they, can I yeah. interrupt for a second? Please do. Your mom called. Oh no, sorry, I got it wrong. Oh, so it's it's second, your I... mom's it's your mom's mom. It's so it's your maternal grandparents. Yes. 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 Yeah. My maternal there was a moment I was like, why did your gram? Ma call her boyfriend uncle no that would have been oh I like that but maybe she does because the truth is like they definitely have an active sex life um and I know this for a lot of different Do you reasons. just see like bedhead on them all the time or well no more so that I was over there one time and she was like do you I'm gonna change his name for this no I don't have to well yeah sure I'll change his name for this I'll call yeah. him Benjamin she Benjamin. was like um you want to know what I'm getting Benjamin for his birthday and I was like yeah sure and she was like underwear and I was like why and she was like because they're always falling off it's a little joke we have oh my god like, for, <laughs> sure. <laughs> for sure my god I thought you were going with the angle of like she's getting him some slutty lingerie which damn no, girl. edible underwear that's what I thought it was going edible what she underwear. says about him is that right now he's 91 she says he's a young 91 how old is she? She's probably 88. Okay. Okay, that age gap, little problematic. Yeah, it's a little... <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, is but he anyways, your teacher or something? How did they... I don't know. I mean, it was like my grandpa's best friend. Like, that's the whole oh, I was kind just of... kidding. But that's yeah. not the problem. The problem is the age I mean, when he was three, she was zero. That's yeah. true. You know, I think about stuff like that all the time of like, there you hit a certain age where it's okay to have an age gap. But it was never okay at like 13 to date an eight-year-old. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, mean, I think I under- it, <laughs> it comes down to like percentage of how old you are, like how much of your life is the difference between you and your partner. That's what it got. That's what it's got to come down to. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just also weird the to age think of consent, about. but mainly that. Yeah. It's just weird to think about though, that like people who are like 80 do have these girlfriends who are like 20 and they weren't even born yet. Oh, I actually know there's someone who I went to college with who I've never actually met in person, but I had like mutual friends with. And I don't want to say your name uh, because her dad is a very famous actor. Mm -hmm. But when he was 75, he married a 25 year old and had her and her brother. And then he died like 
Oh, never mind. I was going to say Woody Allen, which would open a whole oh, no, 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 no. can of worms. <laughs> it's not him. It's not him. Um, and then uh, he died. Wow. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to, I'm going to slow the roll. So the, okay. the, f- your friend from college. Wh- well, I know, ne- not really my friend. It's just someone who I know went to college. With Acquaintance. Me. Acquaintance. Acquaintance. Yeah. yeah. Is the child of a famous actor who is older, now deceased, who yes. married a younger woman. We could figure out who this by is. 50 by 50 years. Way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. What okay. is it? Michael Douglas? No, he's alive, I think. Yeah, oh, he's alive. I mean, like I could I could say the name, but then I have to leave it out. Let I'll, me I'll... get, what's, okay, what's, okay. what's your, I'm interested to spin down the rabbit hole of, if you were to say the name, what's okay. the your biggest fear? What What could happen? Do you think this person's going to reach out to you? She's reversing the interview. Mm-hmm. This, <laughs> this is, is becoming so- very much like therapy where you're like, all right, what's your worst case scenario? Lucas what and I are going to be sobbing by the end. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be crying our eyes out. No, you don't have to answer that question, but I just, I think. Um, Honestly, I think nothing about happened. It's all public knowledge. I just, I don't, I feel, I just feel weird talking about someone like, even though it's like publicly available knowledge that you could see on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I just, I still feel like this weird thing of like, oh, I shouldn't talk about someone who I don't really know that well. So then what is your worst fear in general? <laughs> for me or for No, for I want to know yours. This I want to know yours. You, yeah, Lucas. this is the Lucas podcast now. <sighs> we could do um, all of ours. I would say losing control over what I say or what is said about me. Just like not mm. having, yeah, that not really having control over it. adds up for you. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You know, me and Lucas met like for the first time two weeks ago and we both really appreciate each other's TikTok and, our, and comedy, but it's pretty funny how drastically different our comedy is. And the like, I'm going to tell you the story of the first thing that happened for me go and for Lucas. It. Go for yes, it. go for this it. It really defines kind of who we are and how we oh, handle yeah. situations. Was I, I text him and I was like, all right, I'm going to come pick you up. Um, let's go get smoothies, like pick a smoothie shop. And he picks like some smoothie shop that didn't look very good. And I found a smoothie <laughs> shop around the corner and I was like, oh, let's go here instead. So like already I was like, can I ask hey, why you know? it didn't look very good? Like, what is your criteria? Okay. <laughs> let, okay yeah. let me, let me butt in. Let me butt it. Okay, yeah, here's the thing. I don't ever get smoothies. Yeah, so this is a place a I had smoothie. never been to before. And I just looked up in my area. I was like, exactly. there's a place. I knew that that's what he did. And it just yeah. wasn't enough for what I needed in that moment. I wanted. So like, he's a, a noob, like a smoothie to me, like a smoothie is a smoothie. But and I'm sure that makes me a smoothie noob as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it was kind of like a smoothie bodega. It felt like like I haven't gone on a date with a guy in a really long time because I'm in a relationship with a girl. Um, but it felt like when you go on a date with a guy and you're like, let's go to an Italian restaurant. If they were to just look up an Italian restaurant and just go to the closest one, you know what I mean? That's what I do. <laughs> Am I a man? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I sound so obnoxious already talking about this. Gabby, are you the one dude that Molly went on a date with years yeah, ago? Yeah, did we go on a date? Is that how you look familiar? No. Maybe, we def- yeah. <laughs> you, know, you were saying that I look familiar. Um, but anyway, so we go to the smoothie. No, no hate. I would have gone to the other smoothie shop. I'm sounding really bratty now. And that's not part of this story. That's other <laughs> stories. You we can go- lean into the brattiness. It's welcome. I here. know. So I know. I just and then I hit like- Lucas in the face. <laughs> because- yeah, and then I punched Lucas in the balls. No. So we go into the smoothie shop. We order our smoothies. You got yours without something. I remember that. Banana. I didn't without want banana. banana. Yeah. I got mine with banana. And I had pulled into a parking spot that was metered and I didn't pay the meter because it was only going to be like two minutes. And we come out and this woman's giving me a ticket. And the confrontation I'm about to tell you, I have had many times with meter people because I've gotten so many tickets in New York recently that they start typing in your thing, your license plate. And I always say, look, I'm back at the car. Please stop. Like, you don't need to give me the ticket. I'm here. And they say, no, like once we start, we can't stop. Like the system's already working. And I was We're like, we're addicted. <laughs> you know what yeah. I understand. <laughs> yeah. So then I say, okay, turn off the machine. Then what's going to happen if you turn off the machine, you're telling me the ticket's still going to go through. And they always look at me like, that's a ridiculous thought. And then I'm like, so you're telling me if you smash the machine on the ground right now, my, I'm still going to get a ticket. Anyway, that's not necessarily what happened with the Lucas situation. We go up and to this woman, and I said, hey, and I'm trying to be really nice because this is my first time hanging out with Lucas. And I was like, hey, um, maybe can you not give me the ticket? And she was like, no, this is police business. I have to give you the ticket. And I was like, okay, well, how about I buy you a smoothie? And that's when she kind of freaked out. She said, I remember she said, um, 
She was like, I can't, I can't even have this conversation with you. Please, please get away. This is official police business. As though it was like a crime scene, but you know, she's giving me a parking ticket. Anyway, she gave she me the ticket. Very dramatic. Yeah. It was very dramatic. And my point in telling this story is that I I very much was like ready to kind of fight this woman on the ticket situation. And Lucas is just like this sweet soul next to me. And I was like, this is such a bad first impression to make in front of Lucas is me fighting this meter woman. But it it's was. So, I mean, uh, it's so funny you say that because I feel like a few weeks ago on the pod, Lucas was like, you know, I'm so non-confrontational, Gabby. Like mm. the other day I was hanging out with this girl and she got a ticket yeah. and she went and she like almost like, you know, got into this confrontation with the cop. And I was like, oh my God, that's so impressive. Yeah. I would never do that. So I've now it just heard wouldn't occur to me. Both it's sides really... of this story. Really? You would, you would rather just take the defeat of having to pay that than being like, turn off your machine? I don't think people, okay, this is what I say a lot is that I don't think people realize how terrified I am of being rude. Yeah, that oh, is like, I realize that. That's like, yeah. that seems like kind of your, your brand. So yeah. You don't be rude. And so I am more afraid of like what trouble, more trouble I would get into with a police officer or what else may happen if I just, if, if I do anything other than go, oh, I'm sorry for the trouble, I'll pay this and do and all that stuff. See, I think it's funny you say that because I think I was like that until I got arrested and went to jail. Whoa. And what was that? That was kind of the game changer was freshman year of college. I got, I haven't told the story anywhere publicly. I don't think freshman year of college. um, I I really don't drink and I never drank in high school. I was always the DD. I didn't really drink in college until I was 21. So I was 19, but I did have a fake ID and I had gotten that fake ID to get into comedy clubs. And I hadn't used it yet, but that was going to be the sole goal. So one night, um, this girl who was a bartender invited us to this bar that she was bartending at uptown. She was like, they have food, like you can just come have dinner. So I go up with a group of friends, this girl who, this is all for context and will make sense in a minute. This girl who's from Texas, this like tall girl from Texas. And then this girl who's South African, who later becomes my best friend and you'll understand why. But I don't know either of them. We had just come from a production meeting. So we go to this bar restaurant and the bouncer says to me at the door, he's like, I know this is a fake, like, don't fuck me over. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to fuck you over. I'm just going to go eat mozzarella sticks in a Shirley temple. So I go in and we're having dinner. I'm like getting to know these two girls who I just had a meeting with. Everything's fine. And then we're signing the check and the cops come in like eight cops. And in the back of my head, I remember like the dean of students in high school being like, just like throw your ID on the ground and run out the door. But I didn't do that in this situation. They come over, they ID all of us. I give them the fake ID. The South African gives her passport and the Texas girl, I don't know what the Texas girl did, but we all went into fight, flight or freeze. And we all went into a different one. So Texas girl runs and she gets out fine. Like no one catches her, great. Um, Freeze was Talia, who later becomes my best friend, the South African girl, who's just like so sweet. She was terrified about her visa, you know, like she's getting carded in this bar, blah, blah, blah. Um, Nothing happened to her. I'm not really sure why, but it was me who they take my fake, they go and they're like mingling in their little group to talk about it, I guess. And I decide to go over and do exactly kind of what you're saying, Lucas, because I was so afraid of authority. And Mm -hmm. I, started apologizing and I started confessing and I said hi listen I'm dead sober that's actually a fake ID here have it I don't want it anymore that's a direct quote because they later used that in court I'll get to them I said here have it I don't want it anymore like please I was just having dinner blah 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 blah. and they're like if you had said that when we came in this would be a different story but because you lied up until this point like you're under arrest so they took me outside. They handcuffed me. They put me in the paddy wagon. And it was like a van. Was it the end of the month? They probably just had to meet the quota. No, it was April. I think it was the first week of April, actually. Oh, God. Wow. Assholes. Um, yeah, it really, it was very bizarre. And again, I'm dead sober. We go to the precinct, handcuffed. I walk in. And I remember I just started asking questions. Both my parents are lawyers. Like, I'm from a family of lawyers. Just, it didn't dawn on me to shut up. Also, like, that's not kind of part of who I am like I would I should have shut up but I didn't Mm. and I said when we got in there I was like so how is this gonna work like what's about to happen and I remember a police officer turned to me and said 
it's not like this is your first time being here or it's not like this is your first time this happened. What? So already there was just like what? this weird energy. I had no idea what that meant. They asked me if I had drugs, which obviously I didn't, but I was wearing a jacket that I hadn't worn in a while because it was like early spring. I don't know. And you know how drugs pop you up. You know in how old drugs jackets. show up in old jackets. <laughs> so. They're like, see, that jacket is from anthropology. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that <laughs> is where people love to buy drugs. So. Yes. No, so they start searching my jacket. And I guess, I don't know how, but like there was $500 cash, like in weird amounts in my pockets. And it seemed very druggy, which I was like, great, mm. $500 cash. Where did that come from? So they end up taking me into the back room and strip searching me. Keep in mind, oh. this is all for a fake oh my ID. God. God. So this woman strip searched me, like does like boob check, everything. They didn't do my butthole, which for the sake of the story, I wish that they had, but I'd be lying. Um, and I remember she took my belt and she said, this is so you don't hang yourself with it because I was going to the jail cell and she thought I was going to hang myself with the belt I was wearing. And I go to the jail cell and the whole time I remember being so nice, Lucas. And like, I had admitted to it. I had like, I was asking really polite questions. Um, but long story short, I then spent a few hours in jail. The like beautiful silver lining to this was like this girl that I just met that night, Talia, the South African girl. Mm -hmm. I hear the phone ring at the precinct. She called to find me. This girl didn't know me at all. Oh. She then shows up and gets oh, me out wow. of jail. And we've been best friends ever since. But and like she risked everything because like she was drinking underage, like had come to this bar, like didn't have, you know, was could have really fucked up her visa situation, like came to the precinct to get me like that. Just to this day, I'm like, she's amazing. Meanwhile, but, that bitch from Texas. Yeah, Texas there. just was gone. <laughs> and that girl turned out to be Taylor Swift. <laughs> yes, I feel old sure. yet. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, I, I think I tell that story just because like, I think for so long I try, and I'm not saying be mean, and I feel like I'm coming off mean and telling this, but my dad has always also instilled this idea of like never take no for an answer. And I think there's an in-between way of like advocating for yourself and asking kind of why. So like you're a traffic cop, you're giving me a ticket, yet I'm standing right there. Like there's a mm. way out of this, right? Um, but in, in, our, in my case, it wasn't, there was no way out of it, as you saw. I I that makes it. so much more sense in a way that I can empathize with. Thank you. Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Before I was just a huge bitch, but now he has empathy. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> like up till now, I was like, yo, I fucking hate this bitch. Just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't like, know. If, turn the shit yeah. off. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. I've talked about it publicly either, but I also have an arrest story. You do? Yeah. You got no. arrested? Yeah. For being too handsome? What? For being just gorgeous. Um, what happened? No, I was uh, I was smoking weed in the park when I was 19 with a couple of my friends. Only one of them was smoking with me. The other one was like standing like 10 feet away from us because he didn't want. Uh, we were about to go see a movie together at a nearby movie theater. And like that friend who was just standing far away, he, he didn't want to smoke. He just wanted to watch the movie. And then out of nowhere, we hear freeze. And, the, and a couple of police officers walk down these steps and they um, see us and they go through me and my friend who was smoking our pockets and stuff. They find a bowl that I had in my pocket and it was empty. It was totally empty. And they were like, what this do is just like toss it. So I immediately just tossed it. It shattered on these rocks. And then what a visual. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just it, imagined it like yeah. exploding. Like, it <laughs> hit the wet rock and shattered everywhere. Shards. The yeah, space time continuum. Opened. It's a romance novel now. Yeah, I know. You're like, wow, this, you're telling this very erotically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So it's, it it's that voice. And then the police officer put his finger on my lips, just like, Shh. yeah. Yeah. Shut um, up. yeah. But our friend that wasn't smoking, the police officer saw that he was standing far away from us and they were like, you can go. We know that you weren't. And so, and I was very glad because he was the only one of us who was black. And so mm. I was like, thank God that they just let him go and nothing yeah. worse could have happened. But, um, but the two of us, they, here's the weird thing. They never actually, the police officers never actually said you are under arrest for blah, blah, blah. They yeah, just, they never they said just, it to me either. No, they just put handcuffs on me and my friend and they took us into their van and took us down to the precinct. We were put in a cell and they took our belts and our shoelaces. And uh, for like, I think the same reason you said, so we don't like yeah. strangling. How long were you in the, the cell for? I was there for like three hours. Hmm. What was it and, like? 
not nice it smelled I mean, bad I'm, it was <laughs> you're like it's lovely actually well it's funny you say that because that was actually one of the things that got me in trouble when I was there was I said this is coming from a very like privileged stupid comment that I said but I said I was like do you guys get a lot of funding from the state and they were like um what no why and I was like because it's just not that that nice in here I just always pictured it being nice <laughs> And not like that comment. Oh my god! Yeah, no, they spend it all on robot dogs instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see that. Oh, I thought you were gonna say, "Do you guys have a Wi-Fi password?" Just like- no, I wish. <laughs> I mean, I would have gotten out of there. But um, wow, Lucas, how? I mean, were you terrified as someone who? Oh, so scared, so so scared. I also wasn't a frequent pot smoker. I'm still not a frequent pot smoker. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, so my friend's mom picked us up took us uh out and i immediately told my uh parents what happened um and they were they were really nice and supportive they were like it happens to the best of us we'll get through this and i was given a court date and then the next day i went back to the police station to because the court date this was in the summer before my sophomore year of college and the court date i was given was at some point in november and i would have been at college which was out of state and so i was gonna try to see if my court date could maybe be changed and that ultimately if i had to like fly home to do this then i would but i wanted to see if i could change it so i got to the police station i talked to a police officer who was and i just told my whole story i just like bled my heart in front of him and he was like you're a really nice kid, but you're really dumb, aren't you? I was like, yes, I'm so dumb. I'm a very dumb kid. I'm dumb, I'm dumb. And um, he was like, let me see what I can do. And he went over to see, I think it was his boss or a DA or someone. I'm not sure. But I know it was a woman because he, I think this is a woman who was trying to go out with him because he said, I tried to leverage finally going on going out to dinner with this woman. And now I have a date with her, but I couldn't get anything out of it for you. Like, we fucked in the back room, but it didn't yeah. help you at all. <laughs> what the? Wait, so Molly, yeah. when you were in the cell, were you scared at all? Like, I know, like, Lucas obviously was probably shitting his pants, but, like, yeah. were you, like, nervous anything was going to yeah, happen? Yeah, I mean, I, again, like, it's so funny. I just feel like when you put me in a room with Lucas, it's, like, I, it's actually terrifies me not being in a room with Lucas, I've decided, because I, he is such a, gent, like, kind, amazing person and now that's making me seem like not those things but anyway I just feel like um my point is where I'm going with this is I have always needed adult validation I've always been terrified of disappointing Mm. adults I've always I was the snitch in high school I was the teacher's pet oh who did you snitch on everybody Mm. if you were if you had a party that you were drinking at I snitched if there was yeah I mean even I wasn't that I you got enemies right now and I identified I I I was super afraid of adults I would I would I'm not I don't know if I was a snitcher but I was like especially if I was little, I was more like to tell on people if I, if they, if I thought they were doing something wrong, if I was really little, I definitely was. No, I was that through and through till the end. Wow. It's funny because recently I met this girl who like, we missed each other in high school um, by a year. Um, She just switched schools. We're in the same class. And she, I was like, Oh, we know so many of the same people. And she texted one of the girls who we both know and said like, Hey, you know, Molly Clark, like, what do you think about her? And the girl wrote back and said, snitch city. Whoa! And I wow. wanted to make that my Insta bio, but then I thought, mm. why did you do it? Snitch yeah, City. Snitch, snitch City. City. That is. Yeah. Why did I do that? I mean, we could then we go into childhood shit. You know, it's like, why does anybody do what they were doing? I wanted. Well, to let's go there. Yeah. Is that wanted... crazy? I'm sorry to ask. No, I just no, need we to can know. Go there. I mean, in in I had a really rough middle school years. Mm-hmm to mm-hmm. like where I lost all my friends in eighth grade mm-hmm. and um like my birth my 14th birthday the teacher my eighth grade teachers threw me a birthday party and so at lunchtime it was just the teachers and me and um so I think then going into high school I had just switched school, schools and I just that was my comfort zone like was adults mm-hmm. and I just always related to adults more than the kids my age at that time and I don't know. It felt like the snitching in exchange for just like quality time with right. these people was of more value to me because I didn't want to be with the kids my age. A little morsel of something you could give to adults about whatever was yes. happening in, in kid world. Yeah. Because kid yeah, world I is- I wanted to be an equal with them, but I was never yeah. going to be an equal. They were always going to be the teacher. And that always yeah. made really complicated relationship dynamics. You know? Wow. 
it's funny that's... though because yeah you go no i was just gonna say it's such an understandable like way for you to turn where you're like you're just seeking connection especially yeah. if you find yourself so isolated yeah right at the end of like this time of middle school oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. please go on um but on the flip, I like when I was interviewing for colleges, I had an interview at American University in DC. And my mom, I guess my mom was in the hallway or in the room with me. And the woman asked me, what's your favorite part of your high school right now in the experience? And I've always been so bad with words. Like I get words confused a lot. I have a lot of processing issues. And I said to the woman, um, I really love my high school because of the relations with the teachers especially like male teachers I have good relations with like and apparently relations and relationships I now know are not the same and this woman I said it like in a string of words that made it more sexual than what I just said mm. and it was like <laughs> this woman just looked at me and my mom then was freaking out it was so funny but yeah <laughs> Wow. And now everyone does that in right. I do. I do joke about this, but when I was in eighth grade, I thought orgy was just like short for orgasm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you, people were just like calling it like if you masturbate, you have an orgy. Do you remember when you learned the word orgasm? Because I have such a distinct memory of that. I do not have a distinct memory of. I, I do have a distinct memory of learning what a blowjob was. Oh, I do remember do you, that. Really? Do you want to tell that? I'd like to hear. Oh that. yeah, so I would love was, to um, hear it. When I was in middle school, I was part of the show choir. Um, you that seems tell. really on brand. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, but um, I remember when we were either it was like when we arrived, we sometimes did like places outside of our school. And I think we were in this church to do like some sort of show there or like the opening. Anyway, um, so we were waiting to go up and we were just like hanging out uh, like backstage. And for some reason, they were talking about blowjobs. And uh, someone, this girl asked me, Lucas, do you know what a blowjob is? I was like, yeah, of course I do. And I didn't. <laughs> and, she, and she was like, well, tell us. I was like, I don't need to tell you, don't you know? And, and she was like, yeah. So it was, it was just going back and forth. Of just so two. I guess she didn't know. Yeah, I think. She was, was trying blind, to get it out of you. Yeah, it was the so, blind leading the blind. So oh, what a bitch. It? So who explained it to you then? No one did. <laughs> no, but what happened? No, what happened was later on that night, as my... <laughs> As as my parents were saying good night, and my dad was just sort of coming giving in my you a blowjob. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. He's <laughs> top glizzy fashion. Um, uh, but no, I. But just as my dad was like saying good night, I was like, Dad, what's a blowjob? And my, and my dad gave me a very dispassionate but very good informational explanation. He was like, um, it's when a sexual partner pleasures a man's penis the way similar to how a vagina would and that it sucked and like that. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> and I was just like, good, thanks for telling me. He was like, okay. And that I'm was like, it. Good night, yeah. Good night. And then yeah. he said, don't get a fucking vaccine though. <laughs> 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 don't you fucking dare. <laughs> I actually, I remember learning the word blowjob um, because oh. I was in fifth grade on a field trip and we were at Outback Steakhouse and we had like assigned tables and this kid, Chris Ford, said to me I'll pay you $25 to give me a blowjob in the bathroom and because what was I the snitch the teacher's pet I went up to the teachers and I said hey Chris just offered me $25 to give him a blowjob should I do it and wow um they obviously said no <laughs> and he got suspended for it wow whoa yeah I I actually come to remember it I think I snitched on a kid once but I didn't mean to snitch it was because he said something to me that was like similar to that, that made me very uncomfortable. And I just like asked a teacher what it meant. Yeah. And ah. I think that I honest to God, don't remember what it was, but I think that a bunch of kids later, like felt like I was snitching, but I was just genuinely trying to get answers because yeah. no kid is ever going to tell you what that means without playing like a million mind games. Like, yeah. oh, you don't yeah. know what this advanced adult sexual act is in retrospect very weird to like shame kids for not knowing like very weird move on kids part oh, yeah. to do but that it, to other kids but it's a genius it's kind of a genius move because like a kid's like especially me as a kid like my natural response was that oh something is wrong with me that I don't know it and that's I think like an, and I think that's a very common response for a very lot common. of like that for various situations kids are full of shame well I was wondering how I actually was thinking about this in the bath last night like how this current slash next generation is going to um, 
whether they're just like going to be 10 times better than us, like on the playground. And I say better than us in the tr- sense of like, I don't know. I feel like growing up gender was very much like girl and boy, you know? And when we were in elementary school, there wasn't like non-binary and all of these mm. different genders. And you would kind of tease based on that. Like, I remember we would have an, in middle school, like theme days. And I think one of them was like, dress like the opposite sex day or like people for Halloween would like got, like cool jock guys would dress like the popular girls and things like that and I was thinking last night like how how has it evolved because I'm so out of touch with the current elementary school generation like does that not happen anymore is there not that teasing and when I say teasing used loosely in terms of like you know what whatever way I'm yeah you, think it, you know what I'm trying to say yeah, um, yeah, yeah I don't know I just I'm curious nowadays how it's addressed because at our age we're not like in that world like we don't have kids yet and I don't know I was just thinking about it I think that um bullying never goes away it just evolves I do know from having been a camp counselor to Gen Z kids that they are a million times more progressive about gender like Hmm. Mm. I like what I was uh I was a counselor for like a bunk of girls and they had like a best friend who was a trans boy but they also really hated this other boy who was a trans boy because he was kind of like a slimy kid you know he was always going up to people and trying to like get them to like do sex stuff with him but it was like oh it was this weird thing where like just gender didn't matter to it it was like a total free-for-all but people were like mad at each other for like other petty kid reasons you know and, well, I'm glad uh, that they were. Li- I'm glad that they were like holding his disdain for people for the content of their character and not for like. Oh yeah, it didn't yeah, matter. Yeah. They were like, this trans guy's cool and this trans guy's a dick, and they weren't like, oh, like let's make it a whole big thing. I do remember there was one interesting kind of thing that happened where, um, for a while, the camp rules were a little bit still gender segregated, where like the uh, girls, like the bo- uh, like the boys couldn't come up to the girls. Uh, porch like on their bunk um I don't know why that couldn't happen it was just a like boys can't come here because like you know it's it, it's the girls living spaces mm. and uh these girls they were friends with this trans boy because he was like a girl living in their bunk with them the past year and so these girls were like I don't get it why can't Dylan come hang out with us in our bunk anymore like just last year he was hanging out with us in our bunk all the time and now just because he transitioned like he can't so what they were basically saying was like all this gender antiquated stuff is stupid like if I want to hang out with my platonic friend I should be they should be able to come into my room but Dylan didn't want to hang out with them in the bunk because he wanted to follow the gender rules of being like I am a boy (laughs) so therefore I cannot come into the girl's bunk yeah. That's so interesting. That's very interesting. Like he wanted the the kind of the uh, structure yeah. of his idea of progress. His idea of progress was like fitting into uh, the sort of model that he had been exposed to as a yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I'm sure there's some trans boys who aren't like that, and who yeah. would be like, "Yeah, let me hang out in your bunk." And that's it. It's different for everyone, but I do think that like perhaps the more unfortunate thing is now people probably do get bullied more for the content of their character and they don't have little Mm. gender tropes to fall back on Mm. like I I used to get bullied for my like big bushy eyebrows or being a tomboy or whatever and now people would probably just bully me for being annoying which would hurt a lot worse (laughs) they would (laughs) just bully you for being Gabby just (laughs) and you know what they did it anyway but I think (laughs) today they would do it more (laughs) and that's fucked up Oh my. Wait, I don't think we ever got to Molly, like how you first learned what an orgasm was. Yes. Oh, yeah. That one. Well, I was, it was more just, yeah, I'll tell that story. It's funny though, how you learn different words. Cause I also like mm-hmm. fuck like that one. Um, this girl, I very much remember exactly where I was. She told me it rhymes with hockey puck and that's how you can remember it. But orgasm, I was As with if my you mom. forget. Yeah. Well, I, at the well, time yeah. I was like, I just kept forgetting and I was like, oh, <laughs> hockey puck, fuck. <laughs> Um, orgasm though, I was in Martha's Vineyard with my mom and it was just like a girl's trip. And I forget how, like why it was brought up. I think I had been asking questions about sex and she told me the world word orgasm. And I remember that night we went back to the hotel and all I wanted to do was say it. I just wanted to like feel it coming out of my mouth. I wanted to hear it. I wanted to like understand it better. Now and, this is a romance novel description. Mm-hmm. I wanted to yeah. know what it felt like the word. The, just word, the word orgasm. Mm. 
Um, so she had her headphones on. She was like watching a movie in bed. And I started by just like whispering it like orgasm. orgasm. <laughs> and then I just got louder and louder. And it was like this thing where like, I didn't want her to hear me say it, but I really wanted to get to the point where I was just like orgasm. <laughs> I never got there though. Chris. Yo, do you guys remember the penis game? That reminds yeah. me of that. Oh, oh yeah. my God. 100%. What is it about? Oh, we were all, we're all entitled to financial compensation now. The way that we were all forced to play this fucking yeah. game. <laughs> Have you been injured game. in the, in your, in your place of work? Like this, yeah, yeah. I want to see those lawyer game? ads. Did you have to play the penis game? Um, yeah, so that's how I learned orgasm. But there's a lot. I mean, I'm sure you guys have stories like that too. It's like one word where you're just like, okay, that. It's where I was. Oh, yeah. That's how I learned it. I had a thing where I rip. I realized that all the cis boys around. I mean, granted, it was middle school at the time, so there weren't really any like non there weren't any out trans people so it was just like the boys right and I learned I realized that all the boys had penises and I remember obviously I knew that like Mm -hmm. in an intellectual way but one day it just really hit me like all of these guys have a dick and I would just like looked at them all so differently and it took me like Mm -hmm. two weeks to get over it and then once I finally thought I got over it I learned what an erection was and I was like they all get erections one of them probably has an erection right now (laughs) and then it took me another two weeks to get over the fact that they all get boners I think I was just like on the hunt to see one like I wanted to catch like everyone kept saying that in the act catch one in the wild like yeah you gotta catch them all yeah (laughs) I remember people would say like when they go to sharpen their pencil they get erections and like that's what I associated it with at least that's people would say maybe that was just said to me but so guys would get up to sharpen their pencils and I was just like what's going on oh um, my god the first penis I saw though was at a fire drill I remember this kid came out <laughs> and he was sitting in line like the like cross like line he was wearing shorts with no boxers and I just saw a ball and I just what'd you think that's it. I mean, it, that look? Was, it looked very naked and, and skinny, but not, not skinny, like small, like full of skin. Um, skinny. Oh, yeah. wait. But I've yeah. never heard skinny to describe something with a lot of skin, but in retrospect, Nor have that I? would make a lot more sense. Yeah, that feels better. I have than... a very skinny neck, come to think of it, because oh. like my neck, it like comes out. Really oh, far. Lucas, don't show me that. Oh my God, I don't know why I oh have God, the most Lucas. visceral yeah. reaction to that. Oh Lucas. my God. Have you yeah. done a TikTok of that? Because that would go so no. viral. You have to. That's what you need oh, to do. Gabby, right you okay, dude? That is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. No, I literally. Why? That was day, so disgusting to me. Ah! Molly, what is it? I just said later today, you just have to do a TikTok saying I have a really yeah. skinny neck and then pull yeah. your neck. I guess. But yeah, no, I've, I've always had very, my actual skin is very, very thin. Oh, yeah. Wow. And it's just, just let me know when you put that TikTok up so I can meet you for the day. <laughs> That then I'll come hilarious. right back. I've never <laughs> seen that before. Oh yeah. And no, it's funny is that I when I was in college, I was actually in a play about all these people with um Guinness Book World Records. And I played a dude who's a real dude who has a syndrome called Ehlers Danlos syndrome, who he has like the the stretchiest skin in the world. And I don't have that syndrome. I just have like thinner skin that's a little bit you don't stretchier. have to keep doing it yeah i'm sorry it's do it's, you like I'm, remember your monologue i feel like every no i don't I, I promise i don't every play in the early 2000s that theater kids had to do was like here's an ensemble piece about eight people who have a rare condition played by like rich cis white kids and like i remember like at laguardia they did this thing there's a talent show called Rising Stars and every year they'd have like one segment that was uh, five kids doing monologues about a tragic event and one of them was 9-11. Oh my God. So these kids <laughs> all had to pretend that they were oh my like, God. That's they were hilarious. like fake, you know, the crocodile tears, like my dad died. And then there was one girl who was just like, I lost my sense of safety, which was the only reasonable <laughs> monologue to do. Oh Wait, my did God. you see the did you see that I saw like a compilation of clips of the 9-11 musical that a bunch of kids did at this school? Did it no. did you send me that, Gabby? I think I might have, and it's so it's so funny. I was actually in a play about 9-11 in college. <laughs> Which is wild because like our whole gener our age group, like we can't, right? I mean, do you guys remember 9-11? Here's what's weird. Yes. I was six years old and I here in Brooklyn, and I have no memory of it. My mom told me what happened on the day, which is that. 
I was let out of school early and then my mom picked me up and then she took me uh, straight home, but stopped off at the uh, video store so we could rent like a bunch of movies because she didn't know how long I was going to be out of school and she wanted to have some movies for me to watch. And otherwise, I have I, even that that I have no memory of. Just mm-hmm. I, I was just shielded very well from it. And it just it didn't stick in my mind at all. What about you? But, Gabby? Yeah, yeah, you go finish that, Lucas. I want, I mean, oh, I no, like- but I was going to say, like, I one more thing is that I have a friend who I uh, made a college um, and he told me his 9-11 story, which broke me. It was so funny. So he um, he grew up in Connecticut and he his dad worked in New York City and he was at home sick six years old, at home sick on the day of 9-11. And he was watching the news because it just was on the TV and he didn't have any energy to change the channel. He didn't realize that it was the news. He thought it was a movie. So his dad comes home early because like city's been like semi evacuated. And so he was let home early. And then he comes home, he sees his son watching the news. And because his son thinks that it's a movie, he goes, dad, you got to see this movie. The special effects are awesome. And he was just, <laughs> Oh my God. And he was just like, I can't deal with this right now. I can't process this. And oh by the way, God. just, I think it, I think it completes the story. Uh, my friend, he's now a lighting designer. So he's, Oh, yeah. wow. His first, uh, reason his first to want to gig. Was... And he said, you know what inspired it all? Inspire was the movie 9-11. The movie yeah. 9-11. The movie. 9-11. <laughs> it was a hit. All right. <laughs> Let's yeah. just say it changed the world. Yeah. yeah. Dare I say a double Cinema hit. forever. I was, I was in, uh, I was like seven. I vaguely remember. I, okay. So I feel like when you're seven, you can't actually process hard things. Like I'm not going to lie and pretend like, oh my God, I totally understand all the, I understood all the ramifications of this immediately. I, my first thought was like, I am so jealous that I didn't see it. <laughs> because <laughs> There was a fucking kid, his name was Evan Thompson, and he was the only one who saw it happen because he was late. And my first thought was like, I wish I was late because I didn't get to see it. And then we were like walking around trying to get home from my um, preschool. And we saw like these little like uh, business papers like floating in the wind. Everything looked like a bunch of toilet paper. Like there was all this like debris Mm. um, coming down and everyone looked really like shell shocked and confused. So I asked my mom what happened and I, I feel like I pieced this all together like retroactively and she said like you know the Twin Towers fell and I remember I'd been to the Twin Towers I'd also been in the Empire State Building and I liked the Empire State Building better so my first thought was like I'm so glad it wasn't the Empire State Building <laughs> <laughs> I was seven how was I to know no I mean that's, that's no like no shame at all, imagine I get color. canceled for this in 10 years like Gabby loved 9-11 and she wished she saw it <laughs> like yeah that's me <laughs> Love that sounds 9/11. like that sounds like the sort of thing that people are afraid they're gonna get canceled for. Like, oh, next we're gonna be canceled for like what we thought of 9-11 as kids. Just like, oh, cancel me. Or like I feel like that's the thing like dudes are gonna complain about on Twitter. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. I was listening to a really interesting podcast today. Uh it's called You're Wrong About. Shout out to them. Um, about like the weaponization of the term political correctness and how basically like nobody like people identify as like politically incorrect all the time and like owning the lips but no one really identifies as like i am a politically correct person okay it's just a way to like invalidate somebody else's argument Mm. you know it's like oh you're playing the race card no one's ever like to play the race card here for a moment like it's just a way to be like you're an asshole about something so yeah Yeah. lucas i feel like dudes may complain about yeah being like are they gonna cancel me for saying i like 9 11 or something like no probably not (laughs) it's probably gonna be right right, right. no you're gonna be fine but that is (laughs) just the idea of like oh i wish i could see it it's just like I was so bummed. I was like, fuck, I didn't get to see it. It's just, I did have a sense of like, it's historical. I yeah. also remember outside of my elementary school, Mark Green, who was the opposition candidate to the eventual mayor Bloomberg, was like handing out I thought pamphlets. you meant the author of the Arthur books, but that's Mark Brown. Mark, <laughs> Mark Brown. See, I thought when you said the author of the Arthur books, you meant like John and Hank Green. And I was like, they did that too? <laughs> no, no fucking way. <laughs> yeah he was just handing out pamphlets and i felt like like my mom walked by and was like that's a bad omen he's gonna lose <laughs> wow wow oh my so wait wait so molly you have no memory of uh 
None whatsoever. I have a little memory of going to pick up my sister from school, but I was, what year were you born? You guys are a little older than me. I was born in 95. Okay. I was born in 97. Okay. okay. You're so, my sister's age. Okay. Yeah. I'm 24. Um, so yeah, I really don't have a severe memory of it. I just don't. Wait, Molly, what is your first memory? Ooh, good question. I see, you know what? When I've confronted my parents about it, they're like, that's made up. Like that just didn't happen. But they could just be gaslighting me. Maybe. Sounds you know? like the stove what, is well, on. What is it? What is it? I have like a, I have, but it now doesn't make sense because it's like, I'm basically in my mind have laid out our house differently too. So, but we had this room called a green room, which is true. And I like just have this memory of like, my dad like giving me juice like in the green room but I don't think that that happened now either I've been way too gaslit or that just didn't happen but my why would they deny giving you juice that's such a tepid thing <laughs> like that's such a not well, issue no, to like... I, I don't think it was juice I think it was like wine I remember like having wine for the first time and I was like three or something but that's not that didn't happen I didn't have wine for the first time when I was three or maybe I'm being brainwashed or maybe they like got you drunk and they're like doing everything they can to cover up the story this yeah, is getting maybe. shadier by the but, minute but in the but in the memory that I have there were like these stairs going up in the middle of the room and that didn't have like there weren't stairs so it's really hard because at that time there were so many home videos and I'm sure mm. this generation's even going to be even worse with that but it's like then I have those memories from from the home videos where I'm like do I just remember that because I've watched that video so many times or was that right. really a memory well, I'm wondering did have you guys seen the hot air balloon uh, mental experiment memory experiment no what's so that? what happens is the scientists they um they bring a guy into a room they go through like a bunch of old photos of his and then they ask him like if he's ever been in a hot air balloon and he says no I've never been in a hot air balloon then they doctor a then like weeks later they've doctored a photo with a hot air balloon and mm. like him as a child in the hot air balloon and because he's already been like asked if he had a hot air balloon but he didn't like really make an emotional connection to it now that he's being shown a picture of him in a hot air balloon he's going oh wait maybe I did maybe I was in a hot air balloon so they basically just created a fake memory of yeah. him for him in a hot air balloon and it's, and it's just an exercise showing how malleable memory is and how well, it's not just like you remember things exactly as they are that you that you forget things or you mold smush things together and it's memory is very very malleable and and yeah. that's so much of like what trauma therapy is is like there's emdr therapy i think they had that right which yeah. i've done before where it's like you're holding these two like electrodes and basically that i don't know the i'm about to explain this all wrong but the thought is or the the science is so you're holding these things they're vibrating you're hearing these beeping in your ears and for some reason it like kind of unlocks this part of your brain while you're in that calm state and you, you start kind of retelling a trauma or a memory and you basically twist it to make it positive in your therapy and you somehow it works. Um, wow. I, I mean, it's one of like the most used trauma tools and people basically rewire their brain. I've heard that it's, it's that the theory of EMDR is that like you experience trauma and somehow it gets locked in your brain that yes. it doesn't allow you to process it and that EMDR unlocks Releases you it. so you can process it. And I would love like, if it was just like a positive spin on the trauma. It's like, yes, I was sexually assaulted, but in the end yeah, I came. I probably said that. I think Lucas, you're right. And I'm actually very wrong in what I just said, but I said it so well that people would have believed no it. i don't think that i don't think we I think, it's kind of, I think it's kind of both in that you're right yeah. that's what emdr does um but i know like my therapist does this great analogy with like the routines that we fall into and, and i think that this relates to memory of like we can go down the same sledding hill every day or like old patterns you fall back on it's like you're going down that same sledding hill but to make a new one to like cut a new path with the sled and snow is harder to do you know like but to go down the same path, very easy. And uh, I could pull that into kind of relating to memory, I guess <laughs> you create the new memory, but it all connects. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I say, cause I don't know what I'm trying to say. No, absolutely. Wait, Gabby, do you remember, do you know what your first memory is? Yeah, I was four or three and I was tie-dyeing shirts. Um, hmm. 
I would love to twist this memory and be like, and I was fucked up, but my parents yeah. deny it. <laughs> no, I was just tie dyeing shirts. And then I went home that day in like a little tie dyed dress and was like, this is so cute. And that was it. That was my first memory. That's such a good first memory. That's Lucas, so nice. what's yours? My first memory was, um, I think it was my third birthday and I was being taken to a puppet theater production of The Wizard of Oz. And I was, oh, and no, it ends bad. But the thing is, like, I then watched the Wicked Witch of the West melt and watching like the puppet melt and compact it with like the hand leaving it and it would just deflate. And while hearing it like scream in agony, like the puppeteer was like really good, but it terrified me to my core. And I was just wailing with terror. Just like, ah! it was just so scary. And so that was that was my first memory is just screaming in terror, watching a puppet Wicked, Wicked Witch of the West melt. Yeah, that does sound terrifying. Yeah. I think my real first- I had a phobia of puppets for a while. I had a phobia of, um, I actually had to go to therapy uh, early on because I wouldn't go to theaters or plays or anything, um, movie really? theaters. Because Yeah, I, um, I saw the preview for Lady in the Water by M. Night Shyamalan and it just oh did God. something to Whoa. me. And I would have panic attacks every time I went into the theaters. And like my grandparents- the grandma referred to in the beginning took us to see Monty Python and the Holy Grail and I just melted down and ran out of the theater like I just wouldn't sit there wow yeah Man. I spin it I think I spun it for my college essay of being like this is because I went to film school I was like um I had all this anxiety around watching film and then when I learned the back of how it's done and you know that it how it's me but help me overcome my fear I don't think that's actually what happened but so you went to film school what made you decide like I want to go to film school um I was never good at the five core subjects I mean this is like the real issue that I have with the traditional way of teaching and I'm so envious of your time at LaGuardia even though I really don't know much about that school but I would think it's very different than like a traditional private school um it just felt like if you weren't good at the five core subjects and you weren't smart. And yet I had this niche that I was tapping into of, you know, in high school, making all these kind of like pep rally videos or whatever for the school and senior year, I built a TV studio and it was just like the one thing that I loved doing. And I loved making people laugh. And I'd go, the reason that my um, LLC is called girl in the hot dog suit is because I wore a hot dog costume to Whole Foods and we filmed the whole thing. And it just like made the whole community laugh. And the they called me like over the loudspeaker at the front of the Whole Foods. And this guy who worked there was also had a hot dog costume that he kept <laughs> in his car for just like Whoa. random occasions. And I just like ran up to him. Should it come up? I know how, I mean, so weird. What? But it was just like the two things like, that made me so happy was doing weird skits even for like final projects in class, like I'd be like, instead of writing a paper, can I do this? And I just like green screen myself as George Washington or something. And, you know, I come from a very like logical um, family of lawyers, like kind of back and back and back. And I knew I wasn't going to do that. So it was like, mm -hmm. how do I monetize what I want? Like I'm good at. Yeah. And I wasn't in any AP classes. I just like, wasn't smart in that way. And I was like, well, how do I go to the best school for whatever this would be? And mm -hmm. I think part of me is like, oh, I really should have just leaned into the acting front, but I'm really glad that I went to film school because it gave me the tools to make all my own shit. Yeah. And, um, but I remember freshman year, um, the first day of class, we like all went around. It was like, what do you want to be? What do you want to be of college? And everyone was like a director, a producer, like, you know, key grip i don't think anybody said key grip but like <laughs> key grip. i want to be no the they gaffer. said that in junior yeah. year when they were like oh my god and, i just yes. realized i want to make money <laughs> that's yeah. all i want but they got to me and i said talk show host and everyone was just kind of like what like this is the wrong place for that and i remember thinking like maybe i should be in a different program at nyu and like maybe i should be in the acting school or whatever but i'm so glad i didn't because i just got to start making stuff and i would just put myself in the stuff i was making that is so awesome. And it's, it's oh. really something that's valuable. Like I was, I was uh, listening into a panel last night for my job about like uh, the making of this new show that's coming out in three days called Rutherford Falls. And um, the showrunner was basically saying like that she hired a lot of the different like writers that she ended up using in the writer's room from short films they'd made or yeah. sketches they'd done. And like, 
that at the end of the day, like you can have as many like insider industry connections as you want, but if you don't have a sample or a body of work Mm -hmm. that is fun and entertaining to you and that you stand by. Mm -hmm. And I personally am so bad with this because I like write scripts, but I never make anything because like I'm the opposite of Lucas. I'm like allergic to self-promotion. I like, it's not something I like about myself. I just have a really hard time doing it. So the fact that you were just like, all right, I'm going to put myself in some shit and that's how I'm going to elevate my craft. Like, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I think um, until junior year, I was kind of lying to myself in of college. I'd be like, I want to be a producer. And that that's what I was saying because I felt like the safe mm-hmm. uh, route mm. um, because I do have that half of my brain. But there was that part of me that still was, as I refer to the girl in the hot dog suit, just like that like goofy young Molly. Mm-hmm. And I still wanted to chase, I, mean, I always try to say like, I, I just want to go back to the girl in the hot dog suit. And like, that's how I kind of grab myself. Like, is this project something the girl in the hot dog suit? Would that be? is a country I song. <laughs> <laughs> it's the girl in the hot dog suit. <laughs> so true. Um, just want to but... go back to simple <laughs> times in a Whole Foods with another dude in a <laughs> hot dog suit. It's on YouTube. You can watch it happen. Uh, but I remember I was at an internship. I like really had an aha moment. I was at an internship junior year and I was, I was interning like on the development side because that was kind of the track that I was putting myself on and kids like our age were coming in to these pitch meetings and pitching to the development team. And I was like, I'm right now on this side of the table and I've set myself up to be on this side of the table. I don't actually want to be here. I want to be on the other side. Like, how do I get to that place of coming in and pitching? And it just kind of, took this turn and then senior year to be like you need to say like be confident in what you're saying like it took me the longest time to say that I'm a comedian writer like I still feel weird saying that Mm. and as someone who is very confident for some reason I do struggle with that um and to just go for it and that's brings us to where we are today I mean I'm just trying to go for it I find it so interesting because like that is one area that I'm like very confident in saying that. Mm. And I actually will confront people if they get it wrong. If they say like, sometimes like, uh, even if like, if I'm doing someone's show and someone say like, oh, Lucas, he's a voice actor on TikTok. Uh, follow him. He's got followers. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, 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 no. Comedian. Get, get it mm. fucking right. Like, I don't like being, I get very, I'm very nitpicky about how I'm introduced or how I'm classified or identified. That if you get and even if you spell like my name Lucas with a C I'm I'm very unforgiving Mm. I'm very I'm just like no what is that like it's because the thing is like I'm so doubtful of my own instincts that the one time that I know that I'm right or something Mm. or if I know that this is how I deserve to be treated that is where like that's where I'm like defensive to the point that that's where I will defend myself to the point that I might even get a little nasty wow Um, I once said Lucas with a C and he waterboarded me Really? Yeah. See, but I think he knows that anyway. I would just be like, yeah, like call me whatever you want. Like, because you're asking for it. Look at your face. <laughs> this but, is a very <laughs> waterboardable face. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. Anyway, it's funny. Uh, again, like such a great example of like how I think Lucas and I contrast each other um, and really well. Like, and I look forward to yes. more of a relationship together because like there's this balance of like him scaring the shit out of me uh, being like so we're both very authentically ourselves but we're so opposite in who we who we are um Mm. and it's an interesting mirror this friendship like holding up to myself of being because I've I've had moments like where I'm like oh shit I'm being such a bitch or all of these things I'm like wow I must surround myself with such bitchy dicky people because now I have this guy Lucas who's like the kindest soul in the world standing up in front of me you know what I mean and and, and I I don't and I'm very uh thoughtful loving person which now sounds ingenuine saying because of everything I'm saying right now but you don't have to modify it. You don't have be to at more, all. No, no, no. I more think than point, one thing at once, you know? Yeah, I think yeah. my point is it's just like a really interesting, you know, you surround yourself with like people and I haven't really surrounded myself with someone like Lucas. Um, and have you surrounded yourself with? Huge cunts, just like straight cunts. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> who have I surrounded myself? No, really like to me, very wonderful people. And like, I have a great friend group and great support system and just very... Um, 
but as Lucas said early on, like he doesn't want to be rude, I think was the word that you yeah, used. That's, yeah, that's my biggest fear is being rude or inappropriate. Yeah, I think the people I've surrounded myself with are rude and inappropriate. <laughs> okay, which is not always which is not always terrible. That's the yeah. thing that I've been like trying to get to grips with the therapy is that that's not like the worst thing. Like, it's not like, it's not like the hundred percent, like the best quality, but it doesn't make mm -hmm. you evil, even if you are. So like, just trying to get to grips with like my worst case scenarios. We um, had a question a while back on the pod that was like, would you rather be annoying or condescending? Or not like, would you rather personally be that, but would you rather be perceived by others as annoying or condescending? Annoying, for sure. You'd rather be annoying? Interesting. Yeah, but I very much think I would come off condescending. I'd rather be what I'm saying. I'm not. <laughs> My biggest fear is being annoying because I always got called annoying growing up. And I know I am annoying, but now I would way rather be condescending because yeah. condescending implies that you know what you're talking about. Unfortunately, sometimes in my personal life, that does make me condescending. And my girlfriend's like, why are you explaining like how to do dishes to me? Like I'm mm -hmm. the one who does this or like, yeah. uh, you know, so it's like, a, I think that we always want to be, um, Oh, it's funny you, you say that because I think that my girlfriend more than anybody has like humbled me and brought me down to earth because she doesn't like hype me up in any way. Or I, I like, I feel like my friends also do this, but she, I don't know. She just kind of like one came out of left field dating her on so many levels, but then also just gives me shit and just like doesn't she'll be like oh wow that joke was really funny the second time you know but like <laughs> just like puts me in my place um which wow. is hard to do for me and the fact that she does it I'm still here so well Gabby Great can I tell you roast. can I tell you like yeah, the first wasn't. actual the first actual time that I met Molly was um oh, it was a few days before <laughs> talk about me being rude. For, Especially no, being rude you were rude or oh, I left a comedy show this is like the like you never do in comedy I left a comedy show before it was over Okay, it was an open mic. All right, you're, okay. you're fine. You're really no. It was it was an open mic in Central Park, and um, Molly had mentioned, oh, I might like be able to stop by. I'd love to see you do your thing. I was like, yeah, sure. And so she comes with her girlfriend and a friend, and they set themselves up on a blanket with their dogs. It's very, it's so cute, and it's very wholesome. You but you probably like, got roasted the whole time. Crowd work. Just oh no, really? Time. Not really. It's more. We've been fostering dogs for a year, and this was our first puppy. And it was just oh, a shit show. Yeah. And what's funny is I went over to see Molly because this is our first time like meeting in person. And so I went over and then Molly introduced me to her girlfriend. And I was like, and I'd said like, yeah, you said like, oh, this is my girlfriend. And I was like, oh, I think I know. Um, because, and the reason why is because I, um, uh, is because I'd seen her on like your Instagram stories yeah. of like- It's because you were stalking her. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah, you want a threesome, I get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm so glad. All right, Doesn't. We'll, we'll talk later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk later. Yeah. yeah. Email me. Um, but um, no, but I, but I, I was like, oh yeah, I think I know. And uh, uh, and Molly, no, Molly introduced her girlfriend by going, "This is my woman," just like that. <laughs> and then, and I was like, yeah, I think sure. I know. And then Molly said, "Because of the way I treat her." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, and then I remember I put down a pee pad on the grass. Nothing was making much sense that I was doing for the dog. You put down a pee pad. What for your girlfriend? Yeah, for my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for the dog. He's not she allowed the in dog. the house yet. Let me know when yeah. she is. <laughs> Let me know no, when she's trained. Talk about like a huge bitch move. Our first date, uh, we like hung out the whole night. She came back to my apartment, but I real I had like a real fear of like sleepovers, more like people sleeping in my bed. I don't know. She was a first of a lot of things for me, but it was like 6 a.m. Like this girl and I had been making out all night, like blah, blah, blah. And I just was like, okay, like you should probably leave now. <gasps> and I kicked, and she lived on Long Island. I made her go to Penn Station at 6 no, a.m., no. take the LIRR home. And the way you would have never seen my ass again. I know. Wow. I, shocking. Shocking that she came back. You're you're telling me like oh this girl's always giving me shit. I'm like yeah probably for the yeah. rest of your <laughs> life. The rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. So true. But then oh she she did that to me a few times. I guess. Oh maybe. she kicked you out? No, because I would go to Long Island. She went to Stony Brook, um, and she was a senior, and I was graduated at this point. So like I would go out there because she was still in school. But we'd spend a lot of time like more near her parents' house on Long Island, which was kind of in between because it was an in between. 
And I'd stay there until like four in the morning, like just sitting in a car with her and hanging out and driving around. And then I would just like take an Uber or take the train back to the city. And looking back, I think she did invite me to stay over. I was just like, that's not how I want to meet your parents. Like, I'm not going to meet your parents by waking up here versus like my apartment. My mm. parents. To be fair, I think that's actually a good, uh, to like give yourself time to prepare to meet her parents. I think yeah. that's actually kind of a healthy move to be like, all right, I want to prepare for it mentally. I mean, it depends on how her parents are. Some people like- They were so chill. They could have cared less. Yeah. I mean, I probably could have done that and it would have been fine. Yeah. Okay. But like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how fast I would have been out of that apartment. I, you, Such she must love name. you. She I know. I wish you. she was here to like weigh in on that right now. She does. Oh she God. loves me about that, but she didn't love me then. I mean, that was our first date and she'd come into the city for the first date. I mean, she probably, she knew that there was and some, she paid, she paid for dinner. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> she paid for dinner and got kicked out. You know, That's it's sick. funny. Oh. I have this, uh, I have this, my best friend from high school, she's been with her boyfriend for maybe eight years. And the first date they went on, they were like standing on this long line to get pancakes at one of these buzzy places in LA. And um, he was inexperienced like with dating, mm -hmm. but he's a really nice guy. And the way he tells it, he just didn't want to wait on this long line. So he was like, you know, we could just like, order delivery and go back to my apartment my friend was fucking appalled she was like you just want to get off this line and take me to your apartment and fuck me right now we are on a date <laughs> what are you? they're still together and like oh, years later yeah. he, was, he was just like oh i don't want to win no like i was just like we could just hang out at my apartment like is she drinks. still convinced is she still convinced that that he was like that he just wanted to sleep with her or and is this like a sort of and this is like the ongoing thing. Like he uh, absolutely like, no, we didn't just want to sleep with her. He like was genuine. I know this guy now very well. He genuinely just didn't want to wait online. And that I kind of relate to. Cause like, I've definitely done things that seem like dick moves that are really just logistical, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I love, I love dick logistics because like. Dick logistics. Dick mm. logistics. Le because dick sticks. Especially in a first date. If you're just standing in line together, that's so awkward. Like, are you making eye contact? Are you, you're like, you're, you're not doing anything. You're not eating. You're not, you can't like go on your phone. I feel like that's a hard yeah. thing early on in the night. Cause then yeah. le later you're like, you know, you're like going to make out. You're sitting on a couch. You're kind of like easing into it or something, but standing in line. I wonder if there's someone who like goes on first dates exclusively to the DMV just to see if they can wait online together. I don't think so. No. No. We can. But dream. you do that. We can dream. Lucas, take your yeah, own Luke friend to the DMV next time. I'll think about it. I actually do need to get my ID uh, renewed because I don't have. I a... need to get my ID renewed. Lucas, do yeah. you want to come to the DMV with me? I have an appointment. <laughs> you should be. It... <laughs> what if people are meeting in COVID vaccine lines? Oh. We Are had they? a few listeners write in saying that they're like having crushes on people who are like mm. in their in-person classes because of yeah. COVID and they're meeting because they're like both in the first half of the alphabet or something. So there are like yeah, COVID-related yeah, yeah, yeah. meet cutes. Hmm. It's so interesting, which by the way, is a fantastic segue into a couple listener submissions, which we would love wow. you, Molly, to weigh in on. I would love to. Hmm. Okay. Um, yes. Lucas, do you have one? Uh, okay. Hello, it's your favorite asshole listener. Thanks for reading my submission. I cracked up listening to Gabby wanting to fight me. Girl, oh, you I could remember easily this girl. take me. Um, girl, you could easily take me. Just so you know, I'm 34, so I'm definitely not calling you old. You are young, beautiful, and hilarious. I am an asshole, though, so you're not wrong. Anyway, I have a funny story about getting an x-ray done and needing a pregnancy test prior to the x-ray. I have a serious incurable heart and lung condition, so I go to the hospital a lot. I was out of state visiting Atlanta when I had an issue and had to visit a hospital there. I knew that they'd have to do an x-ray. The triage nurse first asked me if there was any chance I was pregnant. I said, absolutely no chance. She said, how do you know? I said, I've never had sex ever. And she throws her head back and goes, "Ugh, now I have to prove it. Meaning she couldn't skip the pregnancy test. Now I, was, I have to prove it. If she just been chill about it, she wouldn't have had to prove it. Okay, ridiculous. I guess. 
um, meaning she, she couldn't skip the pregnancy test. I was on the phone with a friend as I waited and said, damn, she might be the only person more upset than me that I'm not getting laid. Anyway, pregnancy test negative. I am required to take a minimum of one a month. Ugh is right. Love the show. Love the asshole. Wow. This was in response to, I told a story recently, Molly, about how I accidentally swallowed the tab from a soda can and they had to, uh, they had to give me a pregnancy test because they had to give me x-rays. Really? Yeah. Even though I told them it would be a medical marvel if I was pregnant. A listener writes in, Gabby, you sweet summer child. They didn't think you were lying about, you know, not having straight sex. They just need to x-ray you like in case you have a fetus in you. And I said, um, that I will fight them for calling me sweet summer child. Mm. Um, mm. But now they have an incurable heart condition and they're 34. So now I'm not gonna fight them. Yeah. But you yeah. know what? You know what? Actually, maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's discriminatory. Maybe I should still say like, I will fight them in spite of all of this yeah. because I would treat them like anyone else. My so, dumb brain though was going like, oh, I wonder if you like got pregnant and then get a, an x-ray and then give birth to a superhero. Ooh. <laughs> Molly's thinking about it. I just saw the wheels <laughs> turning in her head. Yeah. Buffering. Okay. She's buffering. Oh my God. I just saw it. I do like that. That see, like that's great. That's where Lucas's head goes. You know, like my head wouldn't have gone there. Where 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 would your mind go? Well, I'm like still trying to understand her story because I thought it was going in the direction of talking about what her chronic condition was, or I thought I, I thought we were gonna learn what like the x-ray showed. So it was Oh, no, I, I mean, if she wants, if this listener wants to write in again and say exactly what's going on, they could, but I, I don't think so. No, no, no. I, so I'm more like jumping to, okay, this story really became about how she was a virgin. She was a virgin yeah. who was At the uh, time. still asked to take a pregnancy test. And the Got nurse it. was very insistent on like proving her virginity. And I think the hero of this story is the nurse because that's well, funny as fuck. I uh that makes me think that I'm sorry they're doing wow that one was really loud they're they're replacing every single brick in my building right now and so it's just for the last two years just been a constant drill wow yeah um so there may be more of that momentarily but that makes me think of um god this is just about to open a can of worms but I had this very rare still undiagnosed basically like vagina thing happened to me when I was a sophomore in high school and it popped up and then it disappeared um, like until basically this thing only happens when I have the influenza virus in me and when I say this thing I can get graphic basically the outside of my vagina breaks into these like black ulcers and it's horrible and I had to pee in a sink in high school for it and like it was just like the worst thing in the world and no one I went to all these gynecologists and all these doctors and no one could find a solution for it. But going back very early, because we don't need to dig into that, very early on in that process of trying to figure out what was going on, I went to just like my general doctor and she, she like, went, she, she like, we, I, you know, took out my pants or whatever and was looking at my vagina and just goes, so have any little boys fingers been playing down there? Oh, that, was oh. direct, that was her direct quote. And I was like, nope, no little boys fingers have been playing down there. Thanks though, Janice. And, oh. um. So I'll never forget that quote, but pulling back to this story, like everyone just kept being like, this has to be an STD. Like all the doctors thought I was lying to them that I wasn't sexually active, which I fully wasn't sexually active because it made no sense why this thing that essentially looked like an STD was happening. Wow. So yeah. what did they end up saying? It. Oh, well, it's, it's, still it's, 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 it's still undiagnosed. It's still undiagnosed. Like they sent like pictures there was like one study in New Zealand that makes it makes like has the exact same symptoms of me. It's like, it was like, um, virgin teenage girl, um, basically like influenza virus in her, was it um, Lord? describing the, <laughs> yeah, it was Lord actually, um, like describing the exact symptoms I had. And the whole thing was like, she stopped getting them after she had sex and so the whole time when I like had this thing happening and I just kept getting the flu like through high school I'd be like I just need to fucking have sex and then I'm not gonna get this disease anymore um whoa you know, it, it's still like I have no idea I mean it's I very gotten... possible you have superpowers like it's very possible you have a magical coochie I know so ask yeah. your girlfriend I'll ask my girlfriend she'd probably say yes I'll just answer for her now <laughs> um 
she uh she nothing she's not a part of the story but I just I haven't gotten the flu virus since so like there's been no real way to test this um but yeah I don't know knock on wood I mean seriously it was like horrible when it happened wow yeah well I, then listener don't you feel better about whatever you have hearing yeah that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You feel so much better um about your with- chronic illness yeah <laughs> It's at least you it's don't just have heart and lung. Ulcer. That's all it's internal. Just your heart you don't and have lung. like a an external vaginal or ulcer. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, so that's Check your privilege. Um all right. Let's do another. Um I, do you have one pulled up? I I do. Um Lucas, stop me if we've read this one before. Okay, Some, okay. Someone says, it. Hi, I'm Ethan. I love the podcast. Okay, so straight to the point. I like this girl I have for a while and I've asked her out a couple times. We've been friends for a while and liked each other, but things have always gotten in the way before we've been able to get into a relationship. When I asked her out most recently, she gave a whole list of reasons about why I shouldn't date her due to shit that has been going on in her life with her crappy family, etc. I really want it to work, but we've been in kind of a weird limbo uh, for a while. Sorry, I lost the page for a second. And all of our mutual friends are telling me to just move on, but I don't want to because then I feel like I will be confirming what she said I would do. What's the move here? Oh, she fully wants you to date her. I mean, she. Oh, I couldn't disagree with you more, but I want to hear your perspective. I could not disagree with you more. This is how I I friend zone men all through high school. Really? Because I'm thinking the wording of that is she saying, here are the reasons why you shouldn't date me, not here are the reasons why I can't be in a relationship right now. That to me would be the friend zoning. But this one is like, oh, look, I have all these issues. Like, I don't deserve anybody. And like, she wants him to come running back and be like, I'll stay with you no matter what. Yeah, that's, my that, that's what I would, Molly, I was thinking the same way as you is that she wants to be, she wants to be proved wrong. Yes. At least that's the, what, that's the connotation I was getting. He doesn't want to be seen as broken. And, you yeah. know, if he leaves, she's broken. See, I disagree because I feel like when I would friend zone guys in, because like in middle school, I had all these kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. awkward guys who like, I never the guys I wanted, but mm-hmm. uh, I would always be like, you can't date me because I'm, you know, I've got so much going on with school right now. And I never wanted to hurt anyone's feelings. I never wanted to let anyone down. You're trying to let people down easy. So I made it all about me. I blamed myself and I said I was a train wreck and that they didn't want to get involved. And um, ultimately that just makes men like you more, uh, which I think is where what Molly and Lucas are saying is like uh, the more, because of weird fucked up shit in our society, the more young women claim to be broken, the more like men and boys want to fix us. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I wonder if this girl is listening, but if she is, I would say like, no matter what you are doing, if you don't want to date this guy, like take another tack because he is reading it as like, you mm-hmm. want it, you want him to date you and you just want him to like come back and be like, you're not broken, I will fix you. I don't, I I can't get a sense of age from this. Did he say an age or? I'm guessing high school. I'm guessing high school. Okay, here's a very, like a very mature approach that I I think I would hit her with. That's going to kind of throw her back. Because I would just very confidently be like, when you are saying this, I'm hearing this, which can you tell me, is that true? So when you're saying that I shouldn't date you because you have all these things going on, I'm hearing you feel broken and you don't deserve love. Mm. However, I see it differently. I really am here and want to give you that love. If that's not true at all, you need to tell me now because I can only play this game for so long before I need to take care of myself. That's very, that's very healthy and mature and very- That's a great point. I think this guy is totally in the friend zone and I think that's okay because it's nice to be somebody's friend. And I think that the reason I say that is because he says he's asked uh, her out a few times, but circumstances have led to them never being together. Um, If she liked him, there would be no circumstances that led to them being apart. And Ethan, I don't want to be a dick. I'm just telling you like what I'm hearing of the situation. Like, I think that she, if she wants to date you, she's probably not ready to date. And if she... Not, not because she wants to date you, but j- just in general, I think she's not ready for a relationship and that's why it's never worked out. 
Hmm. See, I just disagree. It could also be someone who's like who doesn't believe they deserve love or deserves to be in a relationship or thinks that that's what I'm saying. Yeah, worried about the effect. People people get into relationships when they don't think they deserve it all the time, and then they're coying and bad romantic. Yeah, but if you're thinking about high school, if we're thinking talking about a high school grade person. I think there is family logistics. Like maybe there's like, like I know people who it was like, they had to date like a Jewish kid or something like yeah, that. And it true. was like, mm. you know, the parents Forbidden are regulating love. them, leaving the house or that there are just other factors that are playing into their daily life as to the decisions that they make that we don't necessarily have to deal with out of call, out of high school. Yeah. I just this think for very- Ethan's sake, just the fact of the matter is you never got to suffer by your own hand. And to put yourself in a situation where it's more complicated than it needs to be is a form of suffering by your own yeah. hand. There are millions. I, I agree. I think, Ethan, you, again, I think you go in confidently. You know who you are. You say exactly what uh, you're hearing and what your needs are. And then if she can't meet you there, you deserve better yeah. at this point. Pop out. And the most important thing is to understand that, like, this feels so huge but it's so it's such a it's going to be such a small part of your life and you've Mm -hmm. got like a whole life to live and that you don't want to expend more energy than you can supply and you've already gained from this like i think you'll walk away and go into future situations being like huh looks like sounds like feels like that girl that one time i'm not going to go down this road again and now you've had three twenty somethings talk about you on a podcast Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. your that that is huge (laughs) yeah future relationships (laughs) Exactly. just yeah just use us as reference we'll mm-hmm. we'll help you out. um okay here's another one and gabby this this may relate to a phobia of yours um so this person is written in and says my personal phobia is anyone trying to touch or go near my belly button yes I know ex- thank you okay 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 i know exactly where it stems from as a child my mother used to threaten to unbutton my belly button i would scream no my insides will come out and get everywhere years later my mom told my husband about this and now he teases me mercilessly he goes straight for my belly button when i start tickle fights does anyone else have a complex about their belly button wow I have thoughts on this, but if you have a belly button related thing, you should say yours first because mine yeah, is about go the belly it. button. Listeners already know I can't have my belly button touched. Um, it tickles for some reason, and I have just like a horrible phobia of it. Um, but I never thought that it could. This this listener's phobia seems different because they they seem to literally think that you can take the belly, you can remove the I, belly button. I don't well, think this listener actually has it, but I think they are tapping into a childhood, childhood. fear that so they childhood had. fear. This goes yeah. into what I was going to say. No, of course, was, they're not an idiot as an adult. Like, they don't no, think. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, okay, so I start. I, Let's get doctors in on this. Can you unbutton your belly button and just, what just is like a balloon, just everything thing? comes out? This psychiatrist that I uh, started seeing a few years ago, she, I was like, oh, how'd you get into psychological work? psychiatry and she's the super german woman and she was a um neurosurgeon in germany and she was like i was like this big neurosurgeon super old woman and she was like one time i was doing this surgery i was about to start the surgery and the woman said this like grown woman said i know that this is crazy what i'm about to say but my husband my mother growing up would always say that my head was full of horse hay and I'm afraid that when you open my head, horse hay is going to come out. And I know that that's crazy, but that's just, you know, Whoa. what I associate with. So I see this as two very similar mm. things. Of that like, feels very similar. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to tell that anecdote. So anyway, the psychiatrist was like, that's amazing. I want to become a psychiatrist. Wow. <laughs> so I want to be a to psychiatrist point, to prove guess, that people are not full of horse hay. <laughs> that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, to figure out like, wow, these things as kids that are said to us really, really impact us into adulthood. And that's a perfect example. This what this girl just wrote in is same, same category. I don't know what it is, but you believe it for some reason. Yeah. Even oh if you know it's not true. Yeah. I feel like I feel logically. for this person. I think they should try watching Kyle XY because that always made me feel a lot better that he didn't have a belly button. Mm. <laughs> it's funny i don't i didn't i didn't see that show but i remember posters for it by the bus mm-hmm. I, I just always remember just like him it. showing his belly and there was no belly there button no and belly just going button. what yeah. it's like the one selling point i don't know shit else yeah. about what happens in that show yeah i wonder how they pitched that show they were just like so the guy has no belly button <laughs> they, the like, sold 
Here's yeah. the, a like, million so dollars. Fun. Go so make so this. Pack. How do you think you would genuinely react yeah. if you came across someone without a belly button? I'd be I jealous. So many questions. Would you be jealous? Get oh, of course you'd be jealous. <laughs> oh, that's so true. <laughs> I, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to wash it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want. I don't want it to exist. <laughs> I am. I am. I identify as Kyle XY, and I want mm. to be Kyle's stomach. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if plastic, if you could do that with plastic surgery nowadays, if you could really like, close it. Belly button to. removal. I feel like mm. it would just make it another belly button though to close it. It would be another like incision. You're right. Yeah. And then they'd have to touch my belly button. I, that I can't have. So I just yeah. have to deal with what it. I mean, you'd probably be under anesthetic yeah. if they did that. So you wouldn't feel. Don't it. care. I would. I would know it happened. Don't care. The cards are stacked against this. I just have to deal with this for the rest of my life. And so does this listener. And I'm sorry. I sympathize. Well, okay then. All right. <laughs> Not a very hopeful end no. to that. <laughs> I, Your life fucking sucks. Goodbye. <laughs> what if we, oh my, I was just imagining if like this listener goes to a therapist and the therapist just like, damn, you're fucked up, bro. I can't do anything. About- you're just going to be. You're just going to be scared forever. It just Damn, sucks that's to crazy. Be you. Well, that'll be $250. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I I think we should come towards the corner, shall we, Gabby? All the right, corner. so Molly, something that we do at the mm-hmm. end of each episode is that we ask our guest to say how they think they come across to people, how they think they're perceived by people, and then mm. we tell you how we actually perceive you. Oh, wow. I mean, I feel like we've done this. Um, a, little a little bit, bit. yeah. A little bit. I feel like I can come, I, I just feel like I come off two ways, like depending on like who I'm with. But right now, like I'm honestly like annoying myself because I feel like I'm coming off like strong, but like in a like negative kind of intimidating way. And um, I think I come off confident, intimidating. Um, like I have my shit together and not right now, but usually funny. <laughs> okay, Gabby, uh, you go first. So I think to me, you seem like someone who's like lived a lot of different lives. Um, and I, I don't want to say you don't seem confident because you do seem confident, but you also seem like someone who's very open about like being in a state of flux and like changing up their life. And um, uh, I think that's a really cool thing because a lot of people are like, I'm fine where I am right now. Nothing can change. And like, yeah, I think in you, I see someone who's like, I'm still working on myself and this is a work in progress. And here's all the crazy shit I dealt with in the past. Mm -hmm. And here's how it's helped me right now. Um, And I definitely see you as someone who has like very strong personal connections with the people who they love. Like, thank you. I really, I like that read on me way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then what, the one you gave yourself? The one I gave myself. I don't know why I'm like really, I'm usually like not one to beat myself up. And, but I don't know why today on this, I'm like, yeah. We've got a variety. Of, there's a lot of people who really beat up on themselves. I mean, Lucas and I, I feel like we both, like when we, first created this corner like this segment like we did it for ourselves with our guests as well we were very self-flagellating we were we were bad (laughs) we really like beat the shit out of ourselves and like our guests had to be like well well, then why'd you invite me on if you hate yourself so much (laughs) (laughs) Um, why'd you start a podcast if you both fucking suck just I'm like, like, you don't understand. We suck because we started a podcast. It's a a cycle. It's a cycle. Okay, Molly, I would say well, first off, I don't find you intimidating, and I don't think you give off that vibe. I hope, Thank at you. least, I, I hope not to other people, but I really don't think so. I would say, especially after recording with you, is that I feel like you have found very, very grounded needs to be strong, and you want to inspire that in other people as well. Yeah, I and, I also really appreciate that. It feels truer. Both of the things you guys said feel truer than what I was saying about myself, yeah. honestly. And in general, think, you are very you are a very kind person. Like you, thank you. you foster dogs, you have a stable relationship, you go, you go to the therapist, you do really, really you good. Go to the shit. therapist. You go to the therapist. <laughs> and you and you throw breadcrumbs at the ducks. And I don't know why I'm and you 
pet um, the sheep? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came. No, but I would say I think you are just a, I think you're a lot more grounded in a very positive way that you give yourself credit for than you have just given yourself credit yeah for. no i appreciate it thank you and keep that in mind as as we wrap this up this was so fun to have you on we could talk to you yeah. all day um i really appreciate that what uh what projects or if anything or like social media handles do you want uh people yeah, to find plug you and promote all always of plug things. hi on molly hi on underscore molly Oh, there goes the drilling. H I G H, like I like the drug on underscore Molly. They um, said no my... self promotion. Yeah, they said stop. There you that's go. No. TikTok, Instagram. Uh, I'm really not on Twitter, but then my website's themollyclark.com. Um, you can catch some of my like longer pieces there, longer shorts and stuff. And oh, wait, very quickly, uh, spell mm-hmm. out uh, the Molly Clark. T H E M O L L Y C L A R K.com. Nice. And yeah, I mean, me and Lucas follow each other, so you can, and I will obviously be following Gabby oh, yeah. after this. Oh, by the way, uh, just very quickly, I went on a dual live on TikTok with um, uh, Tiga, aka Tiga Reacts on uh, TikTok, and uh, she was like, oh, by the way, that girl that you, like, made a video in 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 her car, like, is she, is she your girlfriend? And I was just like, no. But the, and the thing is, because I was laughing, she was she thought that, that was me like hiding. I, yeah. yeah, and she was like, "Oh no, you are." And I was like, "Oh no, 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 we both have girlfriends." This yeah. is very. No, no let's. This... Uh, maybe that'd be fun to twist. The trick is, you you guys are dating, and your girlfriends are dating each other. Mm. Oh. We are. It's just a big quadrangle of beards. <laughs> yeah, we could just go polyamorous hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you can catch that stuff there. I mean, the last year, I've really just kind of been like quiet on the writing front. I'm writing a. Uh, a tv show and a few movies right now and kind of hopefully long term that's something that people will see and otherwise just just like your boy here i mean i got on the tiktok grind less than him but still on the grind and um yeah nice nice but for your, i would say for your daily dose of being high on molly my insta stories are really high saying. on yes. molly wow <laughs> i will follow you as well i have almost no tiktok presence but i did make another video recently <laughs> oh I every saw. time i make a oh, video good. i feel like i've like taken a shit or something it's like oh my god like look at this thing i'm so proud of that like i'm so proud of this what i made like no because you said that you didn't really like self-promotion so that's why you're doing it i am so honestly just like i love to do my just little stand-up sets in little places and um i feel like you're your own aunt describing what you do she does these wonderful (laughs) little Mm stand-ups in these little places you gotta see fun fact i worked at a commercial production company and my gran would always call it the firm she was like how is your job at the firm (laughs) they're like so good (laughs) so good i don't get paid enough at the firm that's adorable but okay, thank you, Molly. This yes. was an thank amazing. Thank you so interview. much for having me. It just is getting worse, so I feel bad. So I'll go. But don't feel bad at all. Thank you so you much. You guys for are great. Out. I can't wait to bring another dog to one of your sets and leave early. <gasps> yeah. And, uh, yes. One day meet you in person. Yeah. Okay, um, guys. Super fun. Thanks, guys. Best podcast ever. And yeah. uh, you heard it here Listen. First. And remember, nine yeah. eleven was great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you all for joining. Bye-bye. Bye bye.